Okay, so the next step is analytical customer relationship management. In the previous section, we talked about operational customer relationship management, reaching out, making that connection, selling your products and being ready to interact with your customers the way they want. But we also talked about the importance of understanding the customer, what they need, how they interact. And that's where analytical customer relationship management comes in. So it's actually an extension of operational customer relationship management. In the first part, you have all these interactions. From every interaction, you log data. You learn more about your customer. You get more interaction. You see which things works. So from that, you generate a lot of data that you can start analyzing. How often do people complain? What do they complain about? What kind of products sell well? What kind of markets by the, which products are being purchased by what type of customer? When do they purchase them? All of that data you can store and you can start analyzing that using analytical customer relationship management. And that can be used by sales and marketing managers to uh, develop the strategies, to target certain audiences, uh, to offer, to develop new products and services. So data plays an important role in this because in analytical customer relationship management, you use that data to analyze how a customer behaves, how they think, how they, uh, what their perceptions are. So you use that to either identify new products and services or develop ideas uh, to, to prove your customer service. So what you see here on the right side on the slide is what we call an infographic. It's a short uh, exercise that we've done a few years ago where people were marking how many people visited the Starbucks on our campus every hour. And we projected that over the week. Very simple data collection exercise, just in a spreadsheet. But from that, you could see which moments the lines were longer and the lines were shorter. So that kind of information understands that which uh, you could correlate that with the schedules of our school. And you would see, you know, when are what classes will increase the coffee consumption at Starbucks, for example. So next year around, Starbucks could use that schedule to determine, oh, so we can prepare some more cookies and we can all prepare some coffee because we know that that's gonna, you know, after this course, people definitely need a coffee or at this hour. That's a basic analytical CRM. It doesn't always have to be super complex, but it's just analyzing the behavior, understanding your customer, so you can use it to improve your customer service. And there are some technologies that can help with it that you've heard in previous chapters, such as uh, data mining, decision support systems, and other business intelligence technologies. And for that, you can take a look at chapter six. An example that it's not only being used in um, data analytics in, in companies, it's also being used for public safety and security. So. Uh, a few years ago, our king in the Netherlands was crowned. Uh, and at this celebration, at the crowning ceremony, uh, a lot of people were visiting Amsterdam. So the city of Amsterdam released an app that allows you to see where the festivities are, which neighborhoods, what was going on, uh, where you could go. But that app was also sending back GPS data to a server. So what you see here is projected lines of how people move around the city. So that's data. Again, a service being provided. Here is an app with all the festivities. You get data back from that app. You can use it to extrapolate how people move across the city. And from that data, you can make, for example, what we call heat maps. And heat maps shows you where things you know, tend to get busier. If all the people are moving in a certain direction, it would help the city to understand, oh, wait a minute, you know, it's getting too busy here. We should you know, disperse the crowds. Uh, for example, by issuing an alert, sending police, or just encouraging people to go elsewhere and making other activities more attractive or highlighting them in the app. So this is uh, exactly what also could be helpful in Corona, not just by enforcing things, but by offering people information, by anticipating their behavior, uh, you could see movements of people and from that you can offer people certain advice to it. So it's easy for them to avoid busy places. Um, so here, that's part of analytical CRM. It could even go a lot deeper than that. So uh, in, if you look at what is possible with technologies these days is that if you go into a store and there is free Wi-Fi, uh, you could connect to that Wi-Fi. But when you connect, you often ask to log in with your social media profile or make an account or something so that the store will know it is you or if you're coming back and so on. Even if you wouldn't connect to that network, your mobile phone 
is sort of detecting the wireless networks all the time, usually. And when you walk into a store, those hotspots you're connected to can sort of track you where you are. How long are you standing still in front of a certain product or a certain shelf? How long are you standing still in which section? That information could be used by salespeople to understand, oh, you're often looking at tablets. You know, can I offer you some advice? Which tablets would you find interesting? Or I'm seeing you're looking a lot at headphones or other tech, uh, you know, or these kind of clothes. Can I help you? Uh, it could even give you a certain discount to give you just that extra nudge. You know, remember I talked about persuasion that give you that extra nudge. Hey, it's sort of the, uh, I see you're standing still in front of these t-shirts. Uh, you know what, here's a special discount for you. Now, um, it, it happens in some stores, especially in the States, not, here, not as much as it does here in Europe, but it is technically possible. It's the booking.com equivalent of hurry up, only two left. Uh, but then in the physical world. If you remember the chapter about mobile commerce, this is also mobile commerce, very localized, understanding the customer and giving them specific offerings based on their interest, based on their location, based on their profile. So that profile is the online, online identity. And we talked in some other chapters already about all the information and all the social media you can find that builds that identity. And a person has a lot of markers that helps a company to identify that person. Uh, Facebook profiles, social media profiles, email accounts, uh, mobile phone numbers, and all that information can be aggregated into identity of an individual. That could either be very specific individuals, uh, if you talk about, for example, where you register on a website or you have a loyalty card, uh, you know, a company will have a very detailed profile of you and they can use it, you know, use your information to start looking on social media and pull in more information about you, augmenting the identity profile. For example, you would give a limited information to Albert Heijn, uh, but because you give your email address, you give your name, they could find more information about you on your social media profile and include that in their systems as well. Other companies, often more transaction based, they wouldn't have a detailed profile of you, but they would sort of classify you into clusters of customer profiles. So they will have about 10 or 15 different types of customers and you would fall into one or two of them. And based on those profiles, they would make their decisions about offers and so on. So, uh, but it depends, could be very specific, could be more classified, but most analytical customer relationship management systems, they work with something like an online identity. And you might have already seen this, but if you go to google.com slash map slash timeline, you could see an example of what kind of information is available about you. Uh, this is a screenshot from me from a few years ago that shows you where you've been in the world, how often you visited, how long have you stayed there, if you use Google Maps. Um, now, Google is not directly selling your personal, you know, that kind of data directly, like, oh, this is where Kenny's been, you know, here is it. It's more aggregated than that, but still, based on that, you could see, you know, most of my time I spend in Europe, I visit China on occasion, I spend some time in the United States. And it even goes to the level of where you can identify what, what is probably my workplace where I visit a lot, what my home place is, which theme parks I like to visit. Uh, and that's information that Google is already collecting about you when you use Google Maps for navigation, for example. So imagine if you start combining all this other information. What I like is this example from a few years ago that was in Belgium. And what they've done here is they, they, see, they looked at how specific can I target certain customers based on their analytical, on their profile and on analytics. So what they said, they had this uh, forgotten vegetable called pastinac, a sort of uh, root, I believe. And what they done, they made a website, they made some blogs, uh, all you know about how fantastic uh, this pastinac uh, carrot or root is and then um, you know try for fries so what they did is they just took one small village in Belgium uh, well relative medium sized village and they targeted a very specific on Facebook they said we want to you know target as specific as possible at uh, that specific village these kinds of people and they saw they looked at local supermarkets they asked them how many sales have you made of that specific route. So what you saw is 
it, from November, start of November to late December in 2018, it went from zero to 436%. So often we think that advertisement doesn't, you know, doesn't influence us. It, we think that, you know, it's, it's well, whatever, we, I don't pay attention to it, but it shows you that actually very targeted two things that it does have an effect because if fruit or vegetable that nobody almost ever ate went from zero to 436% in sales in two months. And the second thing is that it could be very targeted because it was only in that village where the advertisements were run, where these sales went up as much as they did. Um, so that shows you how detailed that identity is that Facebook has of you that allows them to target you. So uh, you can find in a link, you can find more details about what they've done here. Um, of course, the second effect would be, or the third effect would be a bullwhip effect because now all the companies think there is a huge demand for this kind of route. So uh, farmers will probably start growing it, but we'll talk more about that in the chapter of supply chains. So let's go to the, to the next part. We've talked about operational customer relationship management. We talked about analytical customer relationship management. In the next part, we're gonna talk about collaborative uh, customer relationship management.